In the words of Mother Teresa, today it is fashionable to talk about the poor. Unfortunately, it is not fashionable to talk with them. Some people, however, go beyond fashionable and reach out to the poor and homeless, as Jesus would have done. Reverend Nancy Goff has not only spoken with the homeless, but has actually lived with them. That experience has given her a new perspective and led her to do more outreach. Thank you so much for driving your long hours to get here. <laughs> I love to drive. <laughs> um, you went on a month-long sabbatical, and it was mainly focused on homeless missions. Mm -hmm. uh, how long did you travel to get to those places? <laughs> um, it was a, about five weeks in the whole process. Oh, five weeks. Okay. I went through Buffalo, through Canada, to Detroit. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. And then over past Chicago, and then down to Houston, and then back to Buffalo. So um, that's my home spot. That's and what drew you to homeless missions? Well, it started in, actually when I was serving uh, at Wesley United Methodist Church in Middletown. We were finding that we were having more and more of a population of unemployed, underemployed, and homeless. And uh, we even invited a, a one couple to live in their van in our parking lot and we help serve them. Um, and that was when I realized that there was a bigger um, population out there than we had even ever even thought about. And so we were trying to ecumenically figure out what we could do to serve the homeless. Um, and um, from that, uh, God just put a couple books in my life and, mm -hmm. and um, at different times and um, just had a yearning on my heart. I also was homeless at one time, and I uh, had two children at the time. So I do know what it is to be without a home. Hmm. What were these two books that made the, an impact on you? Well, the two books, one of them I bought at the conference one year. Okay. Um, it's called Touch by uh, Pastor Rudy Rasmus. In, he's from Houston. He serves the St. John's uh, Downtown Church, United Methodist Church. And um, I actually bought the book because of the picture, mm -hmm. just the, the withered hands just reaching out. But I didn't read the book for a long time. It just sat on my desk. I just so was intrigued by the picture. And then I was going on a vacation, needed something to read, so I grabbed the book to take with me. And it truly is about his whole mission and ministry in Houston, Texas with the homeless. And then someone gave me another book at Christmas time, and uh, it's called Have a Little Faith. Um, it's a true story by Mitch Album, and I took that and read that over a Christmas vacation, and it is about um, part of the story. It's a parallel story between his rabbi and a pastor, Henry Covington, who uh, serves I Am My Brother's Keeper Church in Detroit, Michigan, and about the program they have there for the homeless. And I was so intrigued by both places that when the sabbatical came up, I went, okay, I'm taking a journey of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. And I went and I stayed at um, AM My Brother's Keeper Church in Detroit, Michigan for um, about 10 days there and then traveled, to visited Willow Creek on the other side of Chicago, but then went down to Houston and worked with Rudy Rasmus and his church and ministry in Houston, Texas. You said earlier when we were talking that sometimes we have preconceived notions about who homeless people are and you said that really there were some great stories um, of where they had come and um, and then they shared with you how they had fallen but how the church had had accepted them so tell us about the first church that you visited and how it is a the homeless live within the church um, I am my brother's keeper the um, uh, with uh, Pastor Henry Covington who passed away last Christmas time, which is a very sad thing, and um, he is the character from uh, Have a Little Faith. Um, he welcomes in the people that are, are actually living in the church. There were 11 people living in the church, um, and I stayed with them. Each of them have been homeless, 
and um, have found themselves in positions they never thought they would be in. Um, Jimmy, who worked in the kitchen, was their cook. He had owned his own trucking business and um, lost the business, lost his wife, lost his family due to his uh, addiction with alcohol and drugs. And then when he became, wanted to become sober, he found his way to I Am My Brother's Keeper. And um, so he was given the position as the chef in the, in the kitchen. And um, each of these people who live there have given their lives to Christ and are now clean and sober. And um, they are allowed to live there for their room and board. And, um, and they work for the church. And uh, one of the other gentlemen, um, he was a, a director for human resources at a very large hospital in Detroit and fell into the same situation. And so um, both of these men were truly um, employed, educated people who just made bad choices and are now on the road to recovery. And um, he also lives in the, in the, house, in the church. Um, and then um, those are the staff. Uh, then in, on the evenings, the actual homeless come in and they're fed a meal and then they have a place to stay overnight. And the church itself kind of has a story of how um, the author of the book raised money for the story, or for the church. Mitch Alvin was very um, in tune to the homeless as well, and he was on, uh, on a board in Detroit, Michigan. And they said, well, have you ever been to I Am My Brother's Keeper Church? And he said, well, where is it? And they told him, and he said, I pass it all the time when I go to Tiger's baseball games. Mm -hmm. And he said, but I never stopped in. So he stopped in t and he met Henry Covington, Pastor Covington. And um, from then, uh, while they were talking, there was actually drops coming from the roof. Um, and the roof had a huge hole in it. Mm -hmm. And so with that, Mitch gave his, some of his proceeds to help with that, to re put a new roof on the church. In the meantime, they just tarped it. And there are great pictures in the church of Mitch up there working to do all this and on ladders pa plastering the holes in the church. And, uh, uh, and with the notoriety of what happened with the book, um, many other people came to and they were able to put a whole new roof on the church. So it's a start because the inside really needs some work too, but, um, but to be able to actually worship then out of the cold and out of the wet. Mm -hmm. so. There have been many people that you came into contact with that have really been touched by the people and want to give back to them. Um, you have a story about a nurse that mm -hmm. drove two hours to come. Her name is Jana. She works uh, as a registered nurse at a correctional facility and she drives two hours on her day off to um, I Am My Brother's Keeper Church and she will sit there and care all day long for the homeless and what her service and mission is. She literally sits at their feet and gives each one a pedicure, massages their feet, and just cares for them. And she will not leave until everyone who wants to um, have her do this touching situation um, is cared for. And then she drives her two, and two hours back home. But that's her day off. And she just literally is at the feet of each one. And it just touched my heart in such a big way. Hmm. How have you taken what you learned on your sabbatical with these homeless missions and applied them back home? Well, one of the things was uh, always information. So I've, I've spoken at a couple of retreats hoping that um, you know, folks would also get in, interested. Um, it wasn't long after I took the sabbatical and came back that I got moved from my appointment in um, Middletown, but now I'm in Lock Haven, and they have a great uh, ministry there for the homeless, and they are opening up a place called the Life Center, and they're still in the process of remodeling it. It's a home, and there's a, a good opportunity for homeless to come and, and stay there and, and help to get um, employed again or schooling and those kinds of things, and so I'm hoping to get really involved in that situation. Well, thank you so much for sharing and for teaching other people about homeless missions and um, that they're people just like you and I. And if you would like to learn more information about um, I Am My Brother's Keeper and other missions, homeless missions, you can check out my blog at sesquihannaexpress.blogspot.com.